Today we are replacing a motherboard for a Dell Optiflex 380 Low Pro. Uh, this is a common chassis for a lot of different models for Dell, so this can help out as far as with 745, a 760, a 780, uh, and a 580. Uh, we want to first start off with check, finding the latch on the side and pulling it away from you and so you can take off the lid. Uh, the, the tools I recommend using for this is a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver, preferably with a magnetic tip so you can help you uh, with the screws and taking them out so you won't lose them. Uh, also, I like to start off with taking the, off most of the peripheral items so you won't damage them upon taking out the motherboard and make it as easy as possible. Uh, first off with a CD-ROM, make sure you disconnect the cable, the power cable and the data cable. Uh, one of the rules that goes with Dell is if it's blue, it can move, so the latch has blue on it. Um, anything with blue on it can move. So you want to go ahead and take the back slots cover out. Uh, you want to go ahead and also take off the heat sink. You can also take off the retention module that keeps, that keeps the motherboard in place. Now you also will take off the, the thermal cable and the power cable for the power supply. And we also have some SATA cables that will connect to the hard drive and the CD-ROM. Next we have the auxiliary power cable on the front of the motherboard we like to take off. And the, of course the, the fan and the speaker. Now on the motherboard itself, this, um, there are going to be uh, eight screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I put the screws off to the side and make sure they stay out your way. Now, for the I.O. connector that goes on the motherboard, it's very tricky that you don't break it or disconnect the cable. I like to use the, the flathead to help kind of pry it up a little bit, get some of the tension off of it, so it's a lot easier to get up. You can do this just slightly. There you go. Now with the motherboard, it's a little tricky. You have to, it's a very tight space. So you kind of have to pull it towards you. Make sure it's not getting stuck on anywhere. Then pull it back and just kind of like angle it out. It's very important on the replacement. You kind of like have to put it back in the exact same way. It kind of is a it's a little tricky at first, but then you get the hang of it when you do enough of them. Make sure the cables are out of the way, and, and there you go. You want to make sure all the cables go back in. I like to start with the screws first. Make sure all the screws are 
are screwed in. There's always one right behind the memory. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. Next retention module. Then carefully put the I.O. connector, which is connected to the power button of the machine, back in place. Thermal cable. I'd like to go ahead and put the SATA. Uh, blue is really easy to match up the blue for the primary SATA. Uh, main power connector. Auxiliary uh, power connector. The speaker and the, the coolant fan. Really easy. Heat sink. Uh, put the slot cable cage back. And the CD run. And there you go.